It's really been designed to accommodate today's service. Today's service uh, requirements by a family who've had a bereavement are vastly different uh, in terms of what they will accept to say what was happening in the 1960s or 70s. And that is because uh, they want a much more personal service. There's probably less acceptance that are going to do what they're told, uh, which would have been in the 1960s a 10 minute service time with a rota minister who probably never mentioned your mother's name and got her sex wrong and you came out to a another funeral or maybe several funerals waiting to go in. Now that's just not acceptable today. So this establishment, this building here has been designed as all our other crematoria are to accommodate one hour services, one hour time slots where people can come and in fact have a 40 minute service and then in fact have a little chat in the car park and leave before the other funeral comes so that you don't get this tragic conveyor belt effect. And in this chapel here because numbers of people attending services has gone up we have seating for over a hundred in fact if you count the uh, foyer it's 200 and in fact under the port cashier outside it's 400 so most people could be accommodated so, uh, behind me is a uh, ATI CR2000XXL which is the largest cremator that you can buy uh, in the UK it enables us to accommodate larger cremations when they occur um, it also has the most up-to-date mercury abatement system attached to it, which effectively uh, neutralises any harmful emissions. Uh, most people, when they uh, think of cremation, they don't think of emissions. But um, before 1990, most uh, amalgam fillings that we used to have in our teeth contained mercury. And therefore, people, when they were being cremated, were actually emitting mercury out into the atmosphere. So DEFRA, and EU legislation brought in mercury abatement, which is effectively a filtration system which uh, removes anything that's harmful before it has opportunity to exit out into the atmosphere. And we have all of those most up to date systems as part of this facility. These screens here are eulogy screens. We call them eulogy screens because it means that somebody giving a eulogy who doesn't feel capable of standing up at the time can record it in advance and then have it played but they're much more commonly used for people who actually want to show the photographs of their dad when he was a little boy when he graduated when he got married when he was in the army uh, when he retired etc in with the grandchildren etc uh, and that's all designed to make the experience much more pleasant much more comfortable and lastly not to take away the bereavement, we can't take away bereavement, but we, what we can do is make the experience by being efficient, kind, effective and having good facilities uh, uh, um, a better experience than would have been ex uh, experienced, say, in 10, 20 years ago. And then lastly, there's the big um, uh, chapel window there, which is always set, uh, so it just looks out over the pond, there'll be a uh, fountain there, it's not uh, up and running at the moment, but it will be there, and so that you just see that. There's every other facility, like the Gardens of Rest, can't actually be seen from this window, and that's important so that you just get that tranquil view rather than having lots of people running around with flowers, etc. So that's how we do it. Then this is the catapult, that's where the coffin or casket is placed, and it's through that's where the curtains would close normally or not close as per the family's instruction. And then through that catapult is the crematory.